Switzerland. The land of high mountains and glaciers. The land of trains always arriving on time and of the longest tunnels. The land of crystal clear rivers and mighty waterfalls. The land of St. Bernard's dog and of banks, gold, luxury shops, watches and Swiss army knives. The land full of historical monuments, a land breathing with history. The peaceful and majestic countryside from the Alps' highest peaks to the serene banks of its lakes. The land where helicopters are used instead of cranes and where cutting edge technology is used. This is how most tourists see Switzerland. It is also a place where people that speak four languages live together. People from four nations who, being elsewhere and under different circumstances, would be at war. Here they create one nation. They are proud of their country and have always been ready to defend it. However, since Napoleonic times no one has ever dared to attack Switzerland. Not because it is neutral, but because it is able to effectively defend itself. The Swiss countryside is heavily fortified and protected by weapons so well hidden that most visitors never see them. It is a country ready to fight. Let's begin our journey around Switzerland. We will drive through the highest alpine passes, visit mountain forts, mazes of underground corridors, camouflage fortresses, and recently deactivated military installations that have protected Swiss neutrality up until the beginning of the 23rd century. We will also look into various other underground structures hidden in the very vicinity of famous tourist destinations. CMA the Society for the Exploration of Historical Undergrounds presents Hidden Secrets of Swiss Countryside From the Czech Republic we can travel to Switzerland via German or Austrian highways. Our journey leads us around Lake Constance. Here the German, Swiss and Austrian borders meet. When Hitler occupied Austria in 1938, Lake Constance and the valley of the Rhine River, which flows into it, became a neuter gate for the invasion into Switzerland. The Swiss immediately started to build fortifications in 1938, which were designed to protect this area. The lake area was guarded by Frontier Brigade No. 8. These are the names of all local redoubts and fortresses. The most important and strategically most situated was Fort Helzberg, camouflaged in a hill above the town of St. Margreten. Its construction was hastened and the fort was ready for combat in 1941. Its task was to prevent enemies from passing through the Rhine Valley and the debarkation via Lake Constance from the Lindor area, at least until the full-scale mobilization of the Swiss army could be completed. The underground fort for 200 men was equipped with only four 7.5 cm guns with a range of less than 12 km along, with other seven guns for its defense. However, considering their maximum rate of up to 12 rounds per minute and 9th time firing ability, these guns constitute a serious obstacle. The Germans even altered their route of invasion Switzerland, codenamed Tottenbaum, to avoid this fort. The lo-fi placement of its guns in its fort reached as far as the town of Bregenz and the port of Lindau at the other end of the lake. Fort Helzberg is also known by an unusual camouflage of its observation and machine guns bunkers that reassemble two-story buildings. Infantry blockhouses are constant camouflaged with an artificial rock, 
which can be removed back immediately before the launch of fire. The blockhouse was fully combat ready up until 1992 and has served as a museum since then. If the enemy chose to bypass the fort, it would have to advance up the valley against the flow of the Rhine River, where it would encounter the fortified area of Sargans. Sargans was defended by Fortress Brigade No. 13. Built up on the plateau above the important roads of Schur, Zurich and St. Gallen, in 1939 to 1943 was Fort Magletsch, which was designed for heavy artillery. Its construction had to be hastened after the seizure of Czech lands by the Wehrmacht and was combat ready by 1941. The main weapons of the fort were three camouflaged armored turrets with 10.5 cm guns and four 7.5 cm howitzers. Furthermore, it has eight armored turrets with machine guns for its protection, two armored mortars and, of course, an anti-aircraft defense system. The fort ensured the protection of the area between Switzerland and the Principality of Liechtenstein, and its guns could range all the way to Austria. Underground, the fortress consists of three levers which were 30 meters apart. It comprised approximately 4 kilometers of tunnels and halls. Its garrison totaled 400 men and it could resist a siege for up to three months. The upper combat floor of the fort was deactivated in 1995 within the military forces reform and the fort was declassified a year later. From the fortress situated high above the Rhine Valley, you can easily see another obstacle on the Sargon barrier, the infantry fortress of Scholberg. The various sections of Fort Scholberg are camouflaged on a hill, directly above the main road of Sargans. Construction of the fort began in February 1939 and was fully finished in 1944. Originally, it was fitted with two 7.5 cm guns and one mountain gun of the same caliber. The fort was significantly upgraded in 1969, when five anti-tank guns and several machine guns were added. The fort strengthened the barriers of the Rhine Valley, which were comprised of two cannon-armed fortresses, 19 infantry posts, 14 machine gun nests and 22 traffic barricades, which were further protected by 28 bunkers. The Scholberg Fortress was last modernized in 1994. Today the army does not use it anymore and its surroundings are freely accessible. The Fortress Sargans was one of the most important in Switzerland. Therefore it was further protected by Fort Chingel, situated high on a cliff above the Rhine Rapids. The main guns of the fortress were heavy-duty anti-tank guns, along with other guns located in camouflaged casemates. The fortress was supplied by a cableway. When Hitler invaded Poland, Switzerland just took two days to mobilize 480,000 soldiers. Another 600,000 men were called into arms when German invaded France. War came dangerously close to breaking out when in May and June of 1940 Swiss Messerschmitts shoot down 11 German aircraft. Then on the San Margaretenberg plateau near Bad Ragas began constructions of the largest redoubt of the Sagan fortress. Fort Fergal's artillery installation. The first two cannon turrets fitted with 10.5 cm guns with a range of 22 km were fully combat ready in July of 1940 and another two in May of 1942. 
They were located directly in the village of Furkels, camouflaged as haylofts. Beneath them, there were two levels of underground spaces, connected by a 60-meter lift and a sloping corridor. The ventilation shaft of the fort is still disguised as a barn. Underground, there were ammunition warehouses, barracks, a hospital and three decontamination units. The fort crew consisted of 420 men in total. It was not until January 1945 when the fort was armed with the heaviest weapons. Four long-range 15cm guns with a range of 24 km. These were ready for combat in 1946. During the Cold War, the fort was upgraded to resist new threats. It was fitted with pressure-resistant doors and with full anti-chemical protection. The army abandoned the fort in 1998 and since then it has been open to public. Our journey continues up the Rhino River to an area defended by the 12th Mountain Brigade. These forts and fortresses were not designed for battle against the German army. Rather, they were utilized to defend against a possible attack from the Italian army, which would most likely progress via Bellizona and the San Bernardino Pass directly to the fortification in Suffers and the Fort Crestavald. The underground military installation Fort Crestavald was built in a very short period of time between the years 1938 and 1941. It was equipped with 10 cutting edge Swiss 10.5 cm guns, model 39, with a range of up to 23 km. The main cannons were named Lucrezia and Silvia, and they could easily shot as far as the San Bernardino Pass. Their embrasures were hidden by a lift up artificial rock, just as the observation post on the top level of the structure. Access to the fort was guarded by heavy machine guns. The underground area of the fort was meant by 95 soldiers in total, who had all the necessary accoutrements available to them. The corridors inside the fort connected all the combat posts that were situated within the three levels of the fort. Underground cableways transported shot and powder cartridges into two main ammunition stockpiles. The fort was an important base even during the Cold War, at which time it was thoroughly modernized. It was still in use until the year 2000, when it then became accessible to public as the Crestavald Fortress Museum. The tour takes about two hours and you may experience it on your own without a guide. In 1939 the Suffers Barrier was built to protect Fort Crestavald. It was designed to prevent any penetration of the enemy into Rhine Valley along the water reservoir Suffreser to the fort. The fortification consisted of machine gun bastions disguised as boulder sitting pastures, as well as the infantry fort and observation post, which were situated directly in the village disguised as barns. The entire Suffers barrier constituted an elaborate combination of an artillery fort, two substitutory forts, an infantry fort, and many anti tank obstacles protected by machine gun fire. All this constituted just one barrier, Sufers. From the rear, Fort Crestavald is protected by another barrier, Rofla, which consists of several machine gun bastions high in the mountains above the narrow Rofla Schlucht Pass, near the hotel bearing the same name. These fortifications constitute, except for the heavy-duty fortresses, the most important components of the Swiss Guard defense. Constructed since 1939, they were built at key crossroads and difficult to access alpine passes. In the southeastern part of Graubinden Canton lies the Engenden Valley near St. Moritz. 
If the enemy force choose to intrude here from Austria or Italy, it could easily advance towards Sagrans and from there to central Switzerland. The historical town of St. Moritz is known as a winter Olympic venue and is not very suitable for defense installations. However, it is surrounded by many passes, among which we can still find examples of interestingly built disguised barriers. The mountains located south of St. Moritz reach a height of over 4000 meters and their glaciers are completely impassable. The only route feasible for military transport leads through the Bernina Pass. The highest point on the road is 2,328 meters above the sea level and there is also an important railway as well. Unfortunately, at this particular spot, the pass is too wide to defend. Therefore, the stone anti-tank obstacles were built a bit lower. The obstacles are covered by fire from hidden rock bastions on the both sides of the valley. The artificial rock shields, the position of the heavy machine guns and anti-tank guns that were designed to block movement on both of the road and the railway. In the Julia Pass, there are also stone obstacles, which can better fit in a landscape, though they are as efficient as the concrete ones, and they are covered with fire from the rock forts on both sides of the valley. In this country, trains are an important means of transportation. However, in difficult mountain terrain, it is quite easy to prevent their movement. Sometimes a concrete obstacle at the entrance of the tunnel can suffice, but sometimes the entire valley must be shut down. Nevertheless, railways are also guarded by unusual concrete cottages with wooden facings such as these here, at their layered barrier near the serene Lake Schwarze. The white building on its bank looks like waterworks from the distance. In fact, it looks like waterworks even at close range. The special military lock on the door reveals what is truly hidden behind its false facade. A bunker with two heavy machine guns. Nor is the house in Albula Pass a real house. It is actually a modern fort. And above it, in the rock, there is an indispensable, well-hidden rock fort. And directly in the bend of the road, there lies a large heap of stones. It is in fact a concrete bunker with anti-tank guns and it is concealed by an artificial rock. On our steep climb towards the Fluela Pass, we can stop for a while and have a look in an unused road tunnel, which was built in 1882. This long abandoned tunnel has been gradually dilapidating and in places it is almost fully caved in. The valley of the tunnel is guarded by the forts of the Fluela Pass Barrier. Rock caverns are equipped with anti-tank guns and heavy machine guns are complemented by infantry blockhouses on the opposite side of the valley. Unsuspectingly, the countryside around us is hiding many other underground interests. The commonly used standardized elements for constructing these underground installations are concrete. Prefabricated components used both for connecting corridors 
and for access to the built and rotating tank turrets and air raid shelters for soldiers at their combat posts. Almost everywhere we can see the most popular element of Swiss fortifications. A small concrete cupola that can be lifted from the inside by a jack. And through the small opening it is possible to monitor the parameter or the fire an automatic weapon. When the cover is pushed aside it can also serve as an emergency exit for the underground corridors. There are hundreds of these distributed around the country and they are still in use. The fortifications we have just seen can be projected into a synaptic map. However, there are many more barriers. And these barriers are in just one Swiss canton, Graubünden. To the west of the Soffers barrier, there is a historic stone bridge known as Hinterrhein. From here, the well starts to extend to the San Bernardino Pass. During the war, the present road and tunnel did not exist and the only road led along this winding road all the way to an elevation of 2066 meters above the sea level. San Bernardino Pass is still possible only in the summer, so for armies on the offensive this could present a serious problem. We must also not forget that this entire area was in the range of the Fort Crestewald guns. Similarly, the southern route to the pass along the old road from Bellinzona was due to the extensive fortifications practically impassable. In the 12th century only a single castle managed to protect this strategic route. However, if the enemy were to successfully make it this far, they had to first conquer the fortified area of Bellinzona. Bellinzona has always been an important trade center of the Ticino canton and a gateway to the Alps. Important roads passed through this area via San Godet Pass and San Bernardino Pass. The city was well fortified in the 13th century and is so today, with three castles listed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Castle Grande, Montebello, and Sasser Corbaro towering above it. In the Middle Ages, Bellinzona was considered unconquerable. Modern forts that had started to be built before First World War were significantly modernized during Second World War. This area was defended by Frontier Brigade No. 9. The most important defense line was situated along the bank of Lake Maggiore. On one side, the valley was protected by Fort Gordola, which was located on a forested hill, and on the other side by the artillery Fort Magadino, hidden in the forest. In the center, where the Titino River flows into the lake, there is an infantry blockhouse called Magadino. These strongholds have begun to be constructed in 1913 and were fully finished by 1918. The infantry blockhouse in the valley was supported by gunfire from the artillery fort Magadino from high above. The fort was built inside two caverns and was divided into two levels that were interconnected by stairways. The disguised entrance into the underground section of the fortress using artificial rock was added during the Second World War. Today, the layout of corridors does not correspond to the original design. The installation was rebuilt and further fortified during the Cold War. You can peek inside through the embrasures. The guns in the caverns have already been disassembled, but the well-secured underground corridors may still serve some purpose. Nor is the contemporary purpose for Fort Gondola, finished in 1916, is known. The massive concrete structures with barracks is presently located in a built-up area, but is not accessible. Right next to the railway bridge in Bellinzona are the bunkers of the Versaske Battery, which has guarded this crucial railway area since 1916. 
The battery received its name from the river Verzaska, one of the cleanest rivers in the world, which begins in the mountains not far from here. The Verzaska River Canyon is also known as the Valley of Green Water. The incredibly clear ice-cold river is 30 kilometers long and only becomes turbid during the spring thaw. In the picturesque village Lavartezo, a Roman-styled arched bridge stretches over the river. At this location, the river flows between incredibly beautiful rock formations. This wild river does not slow down until it reaches the Diga di Contra Reservoir. Its 220 meters high dam was used in 1995 by filmmakers who shoot there the popular James Bond movie The Golden Eye. Since then, thousands of daredevils have pushed their luck attempting the third longest bungee jump in the world. From the Diga di Contra Reservoir, we must go to Italy. All of the forts that we have seen this far, despite all their monumentality and firepower, were not designed specifically to defend Switzerland. They were built to prevent the movement of troops and the transportation of goods between Germany and Italy, as well as to slow down the enemy's advance until the full mobilization of the army could be achieved. The Swiss army was concerned primarily with the protection of the most important area of the country, which included the Alpine Redoubt, the valley of the river Rhone and the mountain fort Adermatt, accessible only via Alpine passes that were easy to defend. It is true that it meant abandoning the larger part of Switzerland, but since the Alpine passes remained impassable for the enemy, attacking the entire country would be senseless. The key defensive areas were, except for the previously mentioned various sargans and suffers, these fortified areas and passes – Falklas, St. Morris, Simplon, Grimselpass and Furkipass, and direct defense of Andermatt in Schulenen Gorge at Oberal Pass, and the most important fortifications of all, the fort at St. Godot Pass. Despite this incredible system of defense, the Axis powers contemplated several plans calling for a blitzkrieg attack on Switzerland. From one direction of attack, from the Italian army, would lead from Domodossola in Italy through the Simplon Pass. A strategic road including a tunnel was built by Napoleon and used from 1801 to 1805 to allow the French artillery to pass through the Alps. Its construction cost over 8 million francs. It is not used anymore, as cars take advantage of modern tunnels and galleries, but the original tunnels have survived. Even so, it can still be used by even the heaviest vehicles. In the most narrow section of the pass, located in the Gondo Gorge, construction of the one of the first added and cavern forts in Europe, Fort Gondo, begins at early as 1909. This extremely secret and strategically located stronghold protected the Simplon Pass during Second World War as well and remained in active service until 1994. In the summer season the main corridors of the fort are freely accessible and are permanently electrically illuminated. There are no cameras or supervision present. You may walk in the underground areas with complete freedom. Here, the standards that were later employed at the Maginot Line and Czechoslovak border fortifications were first defended. Some components of the stronghold were later modernized, but the overall concept remained preserved. Of interest are the open spaces for the crew and the protected machine guns, which were located in such a manner that the enemy could not attack them. A 
ammunition warehouses and barracks were built into the well-protected underground caverns. The main corridor continues through the mass of rock to artillery galleries built from solid granite rocks. The entire fort is separated from the attackers by a deep canyon. The embrasures are multi-purpose, designed for the deployment of machine guns and rifles. The cutting-edge guns of the fort were anti-tank 9cm guns, which have remained here to this date. The easily controllable, quick-firing guns could completely block the single road leading to Napoleon's tunnel and the Gondo Gorge. This entire area was protected by Frontier Brigade No. 9, also known as the Simplon Brigade. In the summer, we can take a tourist path which leads through the corridors of the fortress and it continues on the roofs of the road gallery or across suspended bridges above the Deveria River and then up to Simplon Pass. Simplon Pass is still considered a highly strategic area. Most of the modern installations and the historical ones as well are still owned by the army, which organizes military drills here. There are also many active and well camouflaged underground areas of interests. At the highest point of the pass, there is a 9 meter high wooden eagle, the symbol of the 11th Mountain Brigade, symbolically built in 1944 of stone blocks from Fort Gondo. Once through the pass, the way is open to the heart of Switzerland. We drive down the road gallery to the area of Visp and the Rhone Valley. Not far from here or just within a motor's range and the rest by train lies the town of Zermatt. This most famous rock climbing and ski resort of Swiss Alps cannot be reached by car. Zermatt is car-free town, only electric buses and horse carriages are allowed. Internal combustion motors are forbidden in order to preserve the crystal clear view of the Matterhorn and dozens of the 4,000 meter high peaks in the vicinity. Zermatt is a picturesque mixture of old wooden houses, narrow lanes and modern architecture. From here you can take a cable car to Schwarzsee Lake and the base of the Matthorn, or to the highest observation port in Europe, the Klein Matthorn at 3883 meters above sea level. There is no cable car that climbs higher. The panorama is, in good weather, just magnificent. Breithorn, Pollux, Castor, Liscam, Monterosa. Each name a mountain climbing legend. And of course the Matterhorn. And beneath it, the rapidly disappearing remains of once mighty glaciers, some of them having melted completely. However, their water has been entirely utilized. Hidden deep below us, there is one of the most extensive underground complexes in Switzerland. When descending by cable car to Zermatt, some of these can be spotted. Entire rivers can disappear in them. One can be reached by a suspended bridge near the Fury cable car stop. The famous Clayson Dixon system gathers water from all of the local glaciers in order to produce electricity for 400,000 Swiss households. The 
water from the glaciers disappears into a maze of tunnels, pump storage stations and more than 100 kilometers of galleries. The water from the Gorner Glacier Glacier disappears into this system. And from here on, there is only a dry bed which captures the overflow from overflow water tunnels. However, for us it will be more interesting to track the water that disappears into the underground. The water reappears 30 kilometers further and 40 meters higher at the tallest European dam, Grand Dixons. The reservoir has an area of 4 square kilometers and contains 400 million cubic meters of water. In the rocks above the lake there are old transport galleries, relics from the period of the dam's construction. Today they present a unique observation gallery which is freely accessible despite the threat of falling rocks and landslides. You also must carry your own light. As this is not the European Union, there are no warnings and railings are rare. Visitors are supposed to use common sense. Two of the longest tunnels are electrically lit using solar collectors but of course, at night, they do not work. The reservoir surroundings are accessible only during the summer months. However, in wintertime, the reservoir is subject to avalanches, being entirely abandoned with service coming just once a month by a helicopter. At the beginning of summer, the galleries are still blocked by snow and hardly accessible, during this time, the water level is at its lowest and sometimes you can see the original dam of now flooded old reservoir which was here until 1950. In contrast, in September, the depth of the lake reaches 284 meters, which makes it the deepest water reservoir in the world. The main dam of Grande Dixons is breathtaking. It contains 6 million cubic meters of concrete and reaches the height of the Eiffel Tower. It weighs 15 million tons, which makes it heavier than the Great Pyramid of Giza. The reservoir, with a system of galleries for water feeders from the area of Matterhorn, was built from 1950 to 1961. From here, water flows through pressure feeders having a length of 50 km into four hydroelectric plants located 2 km below. The overall output of this complex totals at inconceivable 2000 MW. We drive down from the mountains of the Grand Dix Reservoir and below the Rhone River Valley with the town of Zion open up to us. In the Middle Ages, Zion was a residence of bishops. Actually, a bishop's residence has been here since the 6th century. For its defense, two fortresses were built, Valere and Turbillon, and were later turned into castles. The enemy could possibly advance here from Chamonix, France, via the Four Class Pass, which is difficult to traverse. The Four Class Pass lies at the highest point of the road from Martigny to Chamonix, and this strategic road was protected by well disguised fortifications. A fake mountain cottage is, in fact, concrete bunker A57 with a wooden superstructure. Below there is a bunker A58 with a piece of rock hiding an anti-tank 9cm gun. Today all the installations in the pass are freely accessible. Underground corridors are illuminated and the guns remain in their original places. The barn on the opposite slope is also a disguised bunker housing a machine gun.
enemy armies could also penetrate the fertile valley of the Rhone River from the north via the town of San Moris, where the wide valley narrows into the rhone Schlucht Gorge, which was always carefully fortified. A stone bridge over the river has accompanied the castle of San Moris since 1476. The fortification was improved in 1831 with the construction of the Dufour Towers, both of circular construction with embrasures for infantry. Prior to Second World War, Fortress Brigade No. 10 took over the defense of this area. and the cliff directly above the castle, the construction of artillery Fort Sydney with its six anti-tank guns started in 1941. Today you can visit the fortress during excursions into the local Cars Cave, with which the fort is connected by an underground corridor. In 1911, directly above St. Morris, in a perpendicular rock face, Fort Sex was built and was later connected with the cave and Fort Sydney. In 1938 it was equipped with four anti-tank guns, known as the Hermitage Battery, named after a highly situated Notre Dame chapel built on the foundation of a heritage from the 8th century. Both forts were supplied by cableways and the army used them until 1995. On the opposite side of the valley, there is a huge plateau that hides the largest fortified complex in Switzerland. You can reach the very top using a military road with 36 hairpins and an incredible gradient of 35%. Here, one kilometer above St. Maurice, two unconnected underground forts, Daly and Savatan, were built along with several shooting ranges and proving grounds. In more than a hundred years, over 60 guns, cannons and mortars, disguised by various type of masking, were installed. There are also two 90-ton rotating turrets with 15cm guns. Each fully automated gun protected by 40 cm of thick armor could fire 25 cartridges in just 30 seconds. In the fort corridors below, 600 soldiers were on duty. The army has been here continuously since 1890 and only recently has the public been allowed on the plateau and in sections of the underground corridors. Here the guns protected not only the Rhone Schlucht Gorge, but also the entire valley below, all the way to the Lake Geneva, 20 kilometers away. The area covered by its fire included the Great San Bernard Pass, which lay at the border with Italy south of here. The Great San Bernard Pass has been the oldest thoroughfare through the Alps, supposedly dating from the Bronze Age. Above the present-day custom house, the remains of the old Roman road are still evident. The local hospice has been continuously inhabited since 1034. In the harsh winters, local monks helped pilgrims overcome snowdrifts as much as 10 meters high and bred a famous breed of rescue dogs named after St. Bernard. Nevertheless, the fortification of the Great Bernard Pass remained classified. From the French-Italian borders, we will go eastward to the heart of the Alpine fortress. Through the Rhone River Valley to the mountains on the horizon, and there lies Andermatt. When traveling around Zion, we pass the Signalhorn Plateau, which has housed the satellite base since 1974. It allows the government and army, the business sector and other citizens to use wireless communications and to connect via internet with other continents.
We continue to drive against the Rhone River flow, and beyond the town brick, we begin our ascent into the mountains. The weather continues to improve, but from the information's broads, we learn that passes high in the mountains that we are supposed to drive through are still impassable. So in the town of Fish, we shall take a little detour and board a cableway to the top of the Egishorn. It offers a perfect view of the biggest alpine glacier, 24 kilometers long Alets Glacier. On the horizon, near the Jungfrau Joch Settle, tower the best known mountains of the area the Eiger, Münch, and Jungfrau. From here, because of the snow situation, it is impossible to get down on the glacier, and yet there is a way down there, through an underground tunnel. We have to take a cableway to the station Fischeralp and use an ancient mountain path through long abandoned villages to the mound of the Telegrad Tunnel. The one kilometer long tunnel from 1895 was originally designed to drain the glacial lake, which caused catastrophic floods in the valley. Today, there is only a pipe with water for industrial purposes coming from the Vordesee Reservoir. In the summer season, the tunnel serves as a shortcut for a tourist path to the glacier, but it is lit and opened even in winter, even though only few people use it in them. Both ends are usually blocked by snow. The tunnel leads into a deserted and inaccessible valley, which slopes to the Alledge Glacier. We are now 2400 meters high on a rock-filled dam of the Watersee Reservoir. Its water is used for irrigation. It is June, and the snow should have long been gone. Therefore, we must give up on our planned descent to the glacial cracks for now and set out on our return. From the Fischer Alp station, we take the cableway back to Rhone River Valley. Maintenance crews have cleaned the snow and rock avalanches from mountain passes, so we can continue on our journey. Here begins a steep ascent, after which the road forks in two directions. High above us, there are strategic passes. Grimsel Pass on the way to Bern and central Switzerland and Furka Pass, the last defense line before Andermatt. We are entering the most protected area of Switzerland, defended by Fortress Brigade number 23. The list of forts and passes is self-explanatory. At the highest point of Grimsel Pass, you won't see many defense facilities. There are only light forts and observation posts. But a little farther below, near the Grimselzer Dam, the situation is very different. In a rock cliff behind the hotel, there's a heavy artillery fort known as Grimsel. Its construction began in 1941, and just two years later it was ready for combat. It was part of the western defense line of the Goddard Pass. Its main weapons were six 15cm guns with a maximum range of 25 km. Its crew consisted of 250 men who traveled to the fort via a 450 meter long underground cableway. Around the fort, there are approximately 50 support and machine gun points. Fort Grimsel was deactivated in 1998, and its underground areas now belong to the Power Plant Company. However, the uniquely hidden guns underground have remained in their places.
From the road below Grimsel Pass and along the ascent to Furka Pass, there lies the well visible hotel Belvedere. Behind the hotel, there is slowly melting Rhone Glacier. The lake melted glacial water is, in fact, the spring of the Rhone River. In the summer, you can even walk inside the glacier, thanks to the tunnel that has been carved in it. The glacier shrinks by several dozens of meters every year, and the tunnel must be permanently repaired and its existence prolonged. Future generations will probably not have the chance to walk inside the ice-cooled blue radiating glacier. The Rhone glacier, like all alpine glaciers, continues to melt and within the next 20 years it may disappear altogether. When Sean Connery started here as James Bond in the movie Goldfinger in 1971, the glacier still reached behind this rock edge and a hundred years earlier it covered the entire valley below us to the village Gletsch. And even earlier, in 1889, the construction of the artillery fort Gallenhitten began above the Rhone glacier not far from the Hotel Belvedere. Fort Gallenhitten was designed as the main defense post of Furkabas, but it could also, to some extent, cover by fire the area of Grimsel. One of the most beautiful Swiss forts, it was built from white granite blocks 2030 meters above the sea level. Granite was chosen because of its resistance to frequent weather changes. Two 12 cm guns and one anti-tank machine gun could protect the entire valley below. Above the fort there was an armored observation cupola and on the fort's roof there used to be a rotating turret for a 12 cm howitzer. The courtyard of the fort is not freely accessible since the army has only recently left it. Only the entrances to the underground remained locked. The perfectly hewed granite blocks still looks like new. But the artistically elaborated armored gate to the fort and other well-worn metal parts testify to the fact that the fort has been here for over a hundred years. Close to the fort there are the original barracks that housed 80 men and presently stores recent military objects. The highest point of the Fuka Pass is not far from here. Even though the key access road to Adramat is possible only in summer, with the onset of Second World War, this strategic defense area had to be strengthened significantly. In 1941, directly beside the road under the pass, at a height of 1,990 meters above the sea level, began the construction of Fort Fuchsek. The four rotating turrets were meant by 285 soldiers. The turrets are camouflaged as boulders and the barrels are covered for protection against the weather. The above ground section of the fort were protected by machine guns and two well-masked infantry bunkers. Only the army drivers knew that they were not ordinary chalets. The fort, including its underground areas, was finished in 1945 and despite the harsh mountain climate was in operation until 1995. Its 10.5 guns had a range of 22 kilometers. The fort covered the area of Grimsel Pass, Adermatt and Goddard Pass. The heart of this alpine mountain fortress is guarded by Furka Pass to the west, Scholen Gorge to the north, Oberalp Pass to the east and Goddard Pass to the south. The peaceful town of Adermatt was chosen thanks to its position at the last resistant post of the Swiss army and the top command was located here. Its significance remained intact even after Second World War. 
This is why the surrounding mountain forts remained operational as late as 50 years after the war. Only recently several have been decommissionized and their function has now been taken over by more modern Byzantine redoubts. The Rus River turns to the north near Adamat and flows through a wild gorge. The impassable Sholing Gorge has always been a strategic point. It became famous in 1799 when a Russian general Alexander Suvorov was able to ford off a Napoleon-led army four times larger than his. The main battle was fought for control of Devil's Bridge, after which it was repaired and used for another 200 years. It was replaced by a new road bridge and a tunnel in the late 20th century. The wild rapids of the Rus River and Devil's Bridge became a popular tourist attraction. Nevertheless, the place has not lost its military importance. Since the war, the gorge has been protected by approximately 20 fortified posts, including five artillery forts, which are still manned by the army. However, some of the underground corridors are freely accessible and used as shortcuts on tourist rails. Behind the mountains there are paths that the military no longer use, which offer the breathtaking views of the bridges, rapids and the train viaduct. Above the gorge there is an old blockhouse known as Brickwaldboden, from which you can see the northern section of Schollen Gorge towards Luzern and Zurich. Military vehicles use the tunnel that branches off from the road gallery. When looking at it from above, nothing regarding Adamat reminds us of its strategic importance. Yet, without controlling this vital element, traveling through the Alps would not be possible. It is possible that the enemy could try fight its way here from the south, but the way would be blocked by the most important passes in all the Alps. The Godot Pass, also known as the San Godot Pass, situated above the town of Eirol. Anyone who wants to move north of Bellinzona into central Switzerland and further into the Europe has to pass through here. Since Roman times, a mountain trail had led through this place. In 1800, Napoleon had a military road built here, but during the winter, the pass remained impassable. The problem was solved as late as 1882 by, at the time, the longest tunnel in the world, a 15 km long railway tunnel known as the Goddard Tunnel. Needless to say, it immediately became a primary strategic point. Directly inside the tunnel there were four machine guns nests and six flamethrower posts. Above the tunnel's mouth there were forts built, whose remains are still visible. A one kilometer long gallery leads into the tunnel. Through it, soldiers from nearby Fort Airolo, which still retains a permanent garrison, could travel here. If the enemy failed to get through the railway tunnel or the modern parallel 17 kilometer long road tunnel, they would have to advance via the old road up towards the pass. And that would be prevented by various types of fortifications. In the road bend, there is a historic blockhouse. There is a concrete structure consisting of a room for gunners mounted with two machine guns and a countermand for the staff, including a kitchen and a cold store room. This was originally above the ground, but due to a later reconstruction, it is now underground. The army abandoned it long time ago and took away most of the equipment. The underground spaces remained empty. The storage rooms and quarters are vast because the original machine gun blockhouse was later enlarged including shooting galleries for dozens of soldiers with rifles and automatic guns.
concrete shielding gallery stretched dozens of meters both upwards and downwards from the original bunker. They were designed to prevent enemy troops from advancing along the road bends. Above the blockhouse there is the Bartola battery, still meant by the army. And above it there is the protruding camouflage turret of the Fort Fopa Grande. This fort was also crowned with a turret holding two 12cm mortars. These guns were used for the training of the Swiss army and they definitely did not lie idle. The 10.5cm gun turret fired a total of 4,700 grenades and mortars. The fort was deactivated in 1994 and its duties were taken over by a new Artemus underground structure, Bison. Bison installations, which were mounted with two quick-firing 15.5cm guns, have been built around the entire country of Switzerland since 1997 and they take over the functions of the older fort. This underground structure is able to protect the garrison of several dozens of men against modern weapons. Gun turrets are protected by reactive armor, which, when hit by a missile, it explodes against it. Furthermore, suspended chains cause the rounds to explode even before they reach the armor. Cooling water jets not only chill the surface of barrels, but they also limit their being located by smart heat-seeking missiles. Concrete cavities in the walls are designed to protect the gun barrels in case of bombing. Bison is a powerful weapon. It can deliver 5 rounds in 25 seconds at a distance of almost 36 kilometers. High above us, on a strategic bank above the old road, 2130 meters above the sea level, there is Fort Fiaudo, built in 1905. A stone bunker on a polygonal ground plan served as a platform for machine guns and rifles. The bunker was very convenient even during Second World War, because the surrounding terrain was not suitable for the use of tanks. Thanks to a superb view, the bunker was also used as an observation point. From here you can see not only Airolo and the mouth of the Godot tunnel, but also all the access roads to the Godot Pass. The Godot Pass lies 2091 meters above the sea level, and since 1894 it has been protected by only one fort, Fort Ospizio. Originally built of stone, it was later modernized, but in the mid-20th century the protection of the pass had to be reinforced by a new fort. In 1938 an artillery fort named San Carlo was built on the northwest edge of the pass. We are trying to reach there now, but even in June the way through the pass is not easy. Snowplows have not unblocked the road yet. So we will visit the fort on other occasion. The secret fort deep in the mountains lies below the level of the Lucendro Dam. It protected the access to the pass until 1999. Three rotating turrets with 10.5 guns were also camouflaged as boulders. Under the camouflage you can see the original cupola armor of the turret. The underground section of the fort in the present day serves as a conference center with the Hotel La Claustra, having luxurious rooms for 30 guests. However, even in rich Switzerland the guests cannot cover the high operation costs and the hotel is often closed. Directly at the highest point of the pass, the originally disguised entrance into the largest and most important fortress of Godot, the fortress Sasso da Pigna, opens on the hillside. This unconquerable artillery fortress was built from 1943 to 1945 and mounted with 10.5 and 15 cm guns. 
the fortress was completely independent. Its garrison of 500 men operating four main guns to ensure the defense had to have been able to survive here for several months. In winter, the fortress was completely cut off by avalanches. It has been recently deactivated and inside the mountain a topical underground exhibition has been installed called Sasso San Godardo, costing 8 million francs. The underground tour takes several hours and visitors may take it on their own, without a guide. The main gallery is 2400 meters long. Inside corridors and halls, the original military equipment mingles with the cutting edge interactive exhibition focusing on the use of the world resources and their sustainability. There are also air conditioned conference halls of the former headquarters, and on the upper floor, there is a room housing a collection of exceptionally large gems and crystals. The engine room of the fortress takes the visitors into the world of energy. Energy cannot be created, it can only be transformed from one form to another. In the world, energy consumption has steadily been growing and it can only be covered by the better use of sustainable resources, but in such a way that the environment would not be harmed. However, this entails a lot of effort, similar to the problem of information safety. In the virtual world, concrete fortresses cannot help us. Free access to information and new technologies must be protected in a different manner. As our world gets smaller and smaller, mobility opens new spaces, bringing prosperity and progress. The construction of roads and tunnels make traveling faster and the transporting of goods among continents easier but they also irreversibly change the landscape and consume resources. Our climate on Earth changes and water resources get depleted. Alpine glaciers are disappearing, possibly due to the impact of humans. When looking at the metal model of the fortress on display, we finally realize its mightiness. And while the interactive exhibition reveals the future to us, following the underground corridors takes us to the past. We still have to go through hundreds of meters of concrete tunnels with both historical and modern aspects. Here comes our guide to take us by the funicular to the original artillery fortress, Sasso da Pigna, hollowed out in the mountain at the altitude of 2300 meters. The original ammunition funicular transports us in the time. The story of the fortress construction is the story of Swiss freedom and autonomy. To visit the mountain fortress is an unforgettable experience. Now the previously classified premises are open to public and their original gloomy atmosphere. Suddenly we are not in a museum, we are in a real world of the Cold War. The unconquerable fortress was a symbol of Swiss army for a long time, for 56 years. Indeed, you sometimes feel as if the soldiers have not left. The Swiss Confederation Armed Forces have only one objective – to ensure the defense of the Swiss nation. There are just 3,600 professional soldiers, while the rest of the forces are comprised of the men who are subject to conscription. At the age of 19, all eligible men undergo six months of intensive training and until the age of 32, they must attend annual military drill. 
they are discharged from the reserve at the age of 49. Therefore, there are 200,000 soldiers ready to fight at any moment. Technically, the Swiss army is fully comparable with the armies of all modern countries. Civilians are also well protected. In 1960, Switzerland adopted a law according to which uh, every citizen is entitled to a place in a fallout shelter. Switzerland has yet another indisputable advantage. Maybe due to the fact that every soldier in the reserve can possess a machine gun at home, the army is able to mobilize 1,350,000 men in only 12 hours. No other army in the world is capable of that. High above the Godot Pass, there is an emergency exit towards the main armored embrasures of Battery West. Here is where the heaviest guns of the Swiss Redoubt were located. The rapid firing 15 cm guns could fire cartridges weighed 42 kg at the speed of 6 rounds per minute at a distance up of the 24 km. Even today, there is no defense against such guns. The fortress has two batteries with four cannons in total, each weighing 10.5 tons. In the whole Switzerland, there were only 20 such guns. Each gun has its own ammunition stock with various types of projectiles with varying levels of firepower. Spare cannon barrels are still available in shelters, but in the ammunition storerooms there are now only display cases with examples of uniforms, gear, tools and equipped used by the army in the past 50 years. Soldiers will never return here, but the fortress will be here forever. Even though it has never had to fire a single shot, its mere presence may have prevented a war. Mountain fortresses have fulfilled their historical roles. The Swiss army has been slowly abandoning them and has become more focused on mobile combat. Nevertheless, some of the guns and forts will remain operational even in the 21st century as the army prepares for the cheerless future of Europe. In 2012, Switzerland organized a military training exercise dubbed Stabilo Due, advising violent instability in Europe. Should economic and religious protests pervade all of Europe and poorly equipped police and military forces of the European Union members won't be able to manage them. Some stakes will break up into smaller units, in others, Muslim uprising may start. Rich Switzerland will face a great influx of refugees, often armed and possibly even a direct military attack. Based on the exercise results, the defense of strategic points, national borders and airports was strengthened by four battalions of military police, 1,600 soldiers. The general compulsory military service will not be cancelled and 30 billion Swiss francs will be invested into the modernization of the army. Switzerland is a beautiful country. But if you ever come uninvited, please know that this land knows how to defend itself. 20,000 fixed defensive emplacements, 400 heavy artillery batteries, 600 anti-tank guns, 1,800 heavy machine guns, 
2,000 command posts, 3,000 demolition points, 1,350,000 armed men. If you seek peace, get ready for war. Das Manöver für das Planfeuer koordinieren. Planfeuer 112 41 zerschlagen, Stahlgranate, Zeitzünder, Antworten. Verstanden, 37, 35. Anzi 37, 35, Fächer 3 mehr, Antworten. Richtig. Tempierung 342. Tempierung 342. Antworten. Standardkorrektur höher 10, Elevation plus 1. Richtig. Mit Sicht zum Ziel bei den Infanteristen positioniert, erteilt er einen neuen Schießbefehl. 